Welcome back. We're going to do a little bit more advanced topic today when we're working about doing a query using the student schema we see right here on screen. Um, so far, all of our queries, even with the multi-table ones, we've just been following a single key path as we go, for example, from the student table to the um, course table. We have that single key path we're going along there. But oftentimes, when you're working with databases, you may not be working with just a single key. You're working with what's called a composite primary key, aka the key itself. There are two parts to make up that key. And so as you can see right here, when I go to the grade table from the enrollment table, we see there's a two-way relationship right here with the student ID and section ID. Those two things together make up that relationship. So the path on there takes two keys to make that happen. Same thing right here from grade to grade type weight. We have the section ID and grade type code that make up that path. So they have a different path that go along that so we can make that join between them. We have to make sure that we work with using the entire primary key to properly limit our results. If we don't prop, um, use the primary key, the entire one to limit the results, we're going to see that our result set is way too big or large than what we're actually working for. And so you want to make sure that when you're doing a join on a multi-table sequence, look to make sure you do the full primary key, especially if there is a composite primary key in one or more of the tables. So we can work with that. We want to see um, the student's ID number and their grade and their description for their grades from that, that. So in order to do that, we have to go from student all the way up here to the grade type to make that. And so we have this huge, ginormous path we have to make. So you have student to enrollment to grade to grade type weight to grade type. So we have five tables we're joining in to make that happen. And when we make that join in, we have to make sure we get the joins properly done. Otherwise, we're going to have extra information. It's basically creating a mini Cartesian product if we don't do the correct um, restriction on the primary key path. So let's go ahead and build that up right here. And so we're going to go ahead and build a wrong version, see how much it actually causes to happen by skipping the key information. And then we'll add the primary keys appropriately, and we'll see how that actually reduces the results to the appropriate answer. So let's go ahead and build that right now. So again, we're looking at the idea of the path that we can go to get the student's ID, their grade, and their description. And we want to go from student to enrollment to grade to grade type weight to grade type only with sections 105, because again, we want to actually see the actual results for this. So we eliminated the results, so it's just a single section. So that's that whole path we're going from here to here to here to here, then to here. So we've got a big path we have to do to go that, and I'm only using the single key path as I'm going through that, so I'm only just doing on student ID to student ID, student ID up here, making sure those sections happen. And I run that query right here between that, and I'm going to get 316 rows that are in section 105. And that seems a bit much because there's not actually 316 students in there. We can see um, that that information is a bit high. So what we need to do is we need to make sure we have all these ones that have a primary key that's two parts or composite. So when I talk about the enrollment to grade, we have that relationship right here. And so enrollment to grade, uh, so I'm joining to grade on student ID equals grad um, grade.student ID, but I also need to make sure that section ID also matches. And we do that with an insider on with an and block or an and command. And so student ID is matching grad uh, ID, and then we're going to do enrollment right here joining grade, and so we have enr.sectionid equals gra.sectionid. And then that same path right here when I'm going to grade type weight, and so on that grade type weight I do another and right here, and on that I have a section ID already. I need to make sure I do the grade type code, so the GTW. So I run that same query again. So I have my grade type code from GTW, that uh, grade type weight, <coughs> the grade type weight table, joining out in the grade table as well. And that takes us down to 45 rows. That's more accurate for the actual data set we're working with. And so I have student six, uh, 260 has a numeric grade of 87 on their quiz. They have a grade of 88 on their quiz. We don't have a duplication information. Because if I don't do the proper matching up of the primary key to foreign key path on a multi or a composite key based relationship, we get a, not a full Cartesian product, but it's more of a Cartesian product than we actually want when we're doing a join. And so we want to make sure we properly restrict the results so we have a full uh, primary key foreign key path whenever we're joining tables, and especially if they have a composite key, make sure all pieces of that composite key get joined appropriately inside your on clause so you can make sure you have that match. And that way your where clause, all it has to do is limit the results to the appropriate thing you're looking for, in this case, just section 105. But that's how we can do a multi-table join. I can get all the way from the student table up to the grade type, including that description right here. I use that by going through and building that path up here and using the composite key. Every time I have a composite key, I have a com uh, and clause inside my on block where I have to test this thing and that thing, making sure they appropriately reduce the results on that, <coughs> on that query. That's a great way to do some um, complex queries using joins inside SQL. Thanks again. Hope you have a great day. Cheers. See you next time.